Christian, what would your answer be? Yep. Yep. Yes, you know, uh, a lot of people don't understand what a Christian really is. A lot of people think if they're born in America, they're automatically a Christian because we're known as a Christian nation. A lot of people think if mom and dad was a Christian, I'm a Christian. That's what I thought for years. Uh, but there's a lot to being a Christian. <clears throat> if I ask you today, what is a real Christian? What would you say? What is a real Christian? I preached a message one time about uh, Christians. I remember when I was a child, there was a, an evangelist came to our church and he preached. He traveled all over the country. And he said he had only met a few real Christians in his journey that really lived the life that they're supposed to. And that was a challenge even back then. And now as a pastor, it's a real challenge to me. And Brother Charlie talking about Paul was talking, we, we think we suffer, you know. And Charlie's talking about, he said, we get mad because there's no cream to go in the coffee back there or something. And think about what the real disciples, what they went through, and Paul and all of them, Peter. It's hard to, Charlie got emotional. It's hard to read and study about them. If you take it to heart, it's hard uh, to, to compare our luxury, what I say, we we're, we're, we're have a luxury life here as a Christian compared to a lot of other believers. But after looking up, looking at the Word of God and, and uh, the teaching of the Holy Spirit, we're all going to know, I hope, what a real Christian is and how to be a real Christian as we journey, make this journey. The definition, according to the Webster, is one who professes belief in the teachings of Jesus Christ. A lot of people say they're a Christian. A lot of people say that, but they don't profess, they don't believe, they don't live. Uh, I put up one who believes in Jesus Christ and his teachings or his word. One who believes in his word, in him and his word. The Bible plainly teaches that you must believe in your heart. A real Christian has to believe in their heart. You can't believe. Everybody knows about Jesus in their head, but it's got to be in your heart. It says you believe in your heart to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Many people profess him that they believe him, but they don't have it in their heart yet because they don't live like they should. Uh, 
A real Christian is one that has a desire to be like Jesus Christ. Right. My, my explanation when somebody asks me about a Christian, I say is to be Christ-like. I'm to, I'm to strive to be like Jesus Christ as one of his followers. I'm to go by what he teaches. You are talking about the Old Testament. Paul was there. He went down and had a revelation with Jesus Christ. He told him all this, and he wrote all these letters, and he put all this in the book for us. Tells us what to do, how to do it, and everything else. But we fail, we fall short. But we're to strive to be just like Jesus. We'll never be like Him till we go to heaven. It says we'll be as He is then. But we're to try to live a sinless life. We're going to follow. That's what God's amazing grace is all about. But we're to try. Well, you know, being, being a Christian and being saved don't give you permission to go out and live a sinful life thinking you're going to heaven. There's a change in there somewhere that you change and you don't want to be that way no more. Amen. Uh, Amen. It's a life without sin, a life to... To try to live, it's not making yourself self-righteous that you're better than everybody else. You're just forgiven and you're a child of the King and you strive to be like the Father. It's like your, like your children. All y'all probably had children or you know children. Whatever they see Mama do, they do. Whatever they see Daddy do, they do. What they hear Mama say, they say. But that's what we're to be like Christ. We're to follow after Christ. Charlie's talking about me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just following Jesus. I'm just walking right where he leads me to go. That I'm holding his hand because I'm scared to death up here being a pastor. I don't know what to do in here. This is the first church I've ever pastored and God's blessed and I just hold on to his precious hand and let him take me where we go. And that's being a Christian following. It says in the Bible of Acts 11, 26 where we first find that. He's talking about uh, Barnabas, and, and he went to uh, Antioch. They started Peter. They started preaching to the Gentiles. You know, everybody was all the Jews, and then they started up. The gospel came to the Gentiles. They started getting saved, and the church started growing. And uh, they sent Barnabas over to uh, Tarsus to find Saul. He got Saul, and they went to Antioch. And it says when they when he had found him, he brought it's for Acts eleven twenty six. When he found him, he brought him to Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. This is the, the disciples in the church, and they taught much people, and the disciples were first called Christians, or called Christians first in Antioch. That's where we hear that Christian came up. And what he's talking about is the disciples. So you go back and look up what a disciple is, that's a student of a teacher. And in, the, in our biblical thing, that's a, a student of Jesus Christ, a follower of Christ, somebody that's being taught by Jesus Christ. And if you're a Christian, you better be being taught by Jesus Christ. That whole thing in, in the Corinthians this morning about false teachers, if you don't know the truth, you'll believe everything. Charlie was teaching on that this morning. All these TV preachers, all these right here in our community, you do this this way, that way, cross that T, dot that dot. If it's not in the Bible, it's not Christian. It's not Christ-like. We go by what the Word of God says. And, uh, but they gathered there for over a year teaching. Teaching these new Christians what Jesus had taught them and what they had witnessed and what they knew about the Lord and how to live their lives. Living by the Word, not just knowing the Word as a real Christian. Uh, it says the disciples were called Christians. That definition in the Bible is a personal follower of Jesus Christ is what a, a, a student, a student of the Lord, really. Three things that happens to be a Christian. I want to talk about this morning real quick. Three things that have to happen to make you a follower of Jesus Christ or to make you a real Christian. Number one is conviction. You've got to have conviction in your heart to be a Christian. You know, People say, I, I don't understand conviction and conversions and all these things and born again and saved. It's a simple little thing that if you've ever had it or you've ever been close to it, you may be there this morning not know what's going on. But when you leave here, you're going to know what's going on. Conviction. John 16, verse 8 says, Jesus is talking about this. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, when I leave, the Holy Spirit's going to come. The Father's going to send another one, a comforter. And when you study the Word of God, you find out 
And it's complicated when you try to do that. The Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost are one. But he splits them up. He sent his son. Then he sent the Holy Ghost. And one day we'll all be back together with that, with the Father. But it says, uh, when he has come, in John 16, verse 8, Jesus is talking about this Holy Spirit. It says, when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Or convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The Holy Spirit, when you do something wrong, when something's not right, you know, you know you're born again or you know you're not. You sitting here this morning, you know whether you're saved or not. I don't. And whoever's sitting beside of you don't. You know in your heart if you have that peace. And the way I, I always do that's a simple thing. If you died sitting in that pew this morning, do you know you'd go to heaven? Do you know? You can know according to the Word of God. You can know that. You can have that assurance. But that Holy Spirit what gives you that peace. It brings joy and peace into your heart. But it's also what convicts your heart in the beginning. When you hear the Word, the Word convicts you. God's Word, the truth convicts you. And when you hear that, it teaches you of the conviction, the proof, and of righteousness. You know whether you're righteous or not. And the Bible says we're all just filthy rags when it comes to our righteousness without the blood of Christ. And then it warns us of the judgment. It says it will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. God uses the Holy Spirit to convict us, to make us realize we're a lost person, we are a sinner. I've had, I've preached on being a sinner, and I've preached about little, I've told y'all, y'all have heard it over before, about telling mothers with little bitty babies that little baby's a sinner, and they get mad at me. Because people, Colette didn't understand that. She, don't you, you're born okay, and if you do good all your life, you'll go to heaven. That's kind of what she had learned and been taught. That's not true. We're born in this world a sinner. It's in our DNA because Adam and Eve, we come into this world a lost person. I don't care how good you are, you're a lost person when you're born into this world. But that Holy Spirit comes when you start hearing the Word of God, and it starts telling you, you're a sinner. You're not as good as you think you are. You compare yourself to God. God don't have no fellowship with an unholy person. And the only way we get holiness is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that starts working in your heart. And the Bible tells us that. He uses the Holy Spirit to convict us and to lead us. In John 6 verse 44 it says, Jesus said this, No man can come to me. Nobody can come to Jesus. You know, people say, well, when I get old, I'm going to quit partying and all that, and I'm going to get right and get in church. And It don't happen that way. It don't happen that way. If you hear the Word of God and the Holy Spirit convicts you, you better wake up and listen to it. It says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Conviction comes first before salvation. You have to... To be a Christian, you have to experience that conviction. You have to be convicted. You know, we used to do soul winning at Landmark, and uh, uh, the, the men that I went with, I was a new Christian, and they, you know, I, I was nervous going out trying to tell people about Jesus. They said, tell them about Jesus ain't nothing. Make them realize they lost is the hard part. You know, people don't think they need to say, why do I need Jesus? Uh, it's hard to get them, but when the Holy Spirit, when you give them, when you give them the Word of God, that's why when you witness to somebody, it's better to give them some scriptures in your opinion. Because God's Word don't return void. It's sharper than a two-edged sword and it'll prick and convict the heart of the meanest person in the world. But you have to have conviction. To be a Christian, you have to be convicted and found guilty of your sin and know you need to pay the debt. And number two, there has to be conversion. Charlie mentioned that this morning. You don't hear being converted much. There has to be. Peter preached in Acts. He said, Repent ye therefore and be converted. Be converted. We've got to be changed. See, we're born into this world a lost sinner. We can't go to heaven a lost sinner. We've got to go to heaven a righteous saint. And we have to have conversion. There has to be a change in our life. A conversion that comes by believing and accepting the Word of God and by professing Jesus, by knowing Jesus as a personal Savior, not in your head. You're not going to go to heaven because you know Jesus in your head. You're going to go to heaven because you know Jesus in your heart. It becomes a personal relationship. Uh, 
The Lord comes and He convicts our heart and He offers salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. First, you have to repent. That conversion comes with, with some, there's a few little things that you have to do to really be changed and converted. I've seen a lot of people, Charlie's talking about, they come to the altar, they pray the prayer, they get saved, and they go out feeling good, all emotional, and six weeks or six months later, they're right back with his hand. And then they don't believe that Christianity is real. It's not that this is not real, it was because they weren't real. They believe you believe in your heart. God, God knows the inner person. He knows your heart. You can put on a show uh, uh, any way you want to. You can put on a show for the Lord. And you can come in here and lift your hands and praise God and shout and give money and worship like we do. And if you're not doing it in your heart and doing it for the right reason, God knows you're a hypocrite. He knows you're fake. Uh, and they go back to their old way. But you repent. To be converted, you repent. You turn from this world to the Lord. You turn from your your will to God's will. Uh, you live for Christ. You're born again, what we call being born again. Born into the family of God, you become one of God's children. You become one of the family. Accept God's gift unto you, His Son, as Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we can become a new creature. It says when you're born again, you become a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. If you don't like who you are today, you can be something different when you leave here today. Amen. You can be a different person. Uh, God changes you. That conversion is a change in your life. Uh, it don't matter what's going on in your life. If God's speaking to your heart, if it may be not just because you're here in church, but maybe you've been hearing the Word of God here or on the radio or somewhere. Something's been going on in here telling you, it's just not right. I know I'm missing something. That's what we call conviction. And if you accept that conviction is what it is and believe in your heart that God can change you, that's when the conversion comes. That's when He changes and makes a new creature out of you. That's what a real Christian is. A real Christian has been convicted, they've been converted, and they've been changed. Number three, you must be committed. If you're going to be a real Christian, you've got to be committed to serving the Lord. Right. you got to make a commitment. you got to turn loose all the things out here in this world. I'm not saying when you're a Christian, you can't go have fun, you can't go on vacation, you can't golf. You, you can do all the things you want to do. But all of a sudden, when that change comes, God means more than all that stuff to you. Amen. You don't forsake worshiping God and studying your Bible and talking to God and living for God for the pleasures of the world. You forsake the pleasures of the world to be committed and devoted to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's one of the hard things about being a Christian. You know, I was at home this morning, Denise is sick. I got up and fixed me some breakfast, and most of y'all know where I live, and our front porch has got a beautiful view of these south mountains over here, and the sun come up, and it was beautiful, and I was standing there, and this is how the devil works. He's been the pastor now. I was standing there, we, we've lived over there for two years in that house, and I hardly ever get to sit on that front porch when we don't have the grandkids or we're not getting ready for church, we're not busy. Well, I could just sit out in that rocking chair, have my coffee, and sit there and look at the mountains. And I was in there getting breakfast this morning, looking out the window at them rocking chairs on the porch. And there come old devil. Your wife's sick, why don't you call Charlie? Just get your breakfast and go sit on the porch today, preacher. And I'm looking down the mountains and, you know, I said, I started praying. I said, help me, Lord. You know, the Bible says, draw not to God and resist the devil. He'll flee from you. I'd like to run him away. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's hard sometimes. And you know what the Lord put on my heart? He said, them mountains ain't nothing but what you're going to get to say, boy. You just go do what I called you to do. Praise God, I'm here preaching this morning. But you got to be committed. It would have been easy for me. I could have called Brother Charlie or called the pastor to come down here. Y'all could have had church without me. It's not about me. It's about God. It's about Jesus. But God said, you ain't seen nothing yet. That mountain ain't nothing what you're going to get to see. I can go back home this afternoon and sit and look at those mountains. But the devil just does those things. Used to, it was like the flea market or going to the mountains, taking the kids from it, you know, always something 
And he wants to put between you and God. But God's got to be, if you want to be a real Christian, God's got to be number one. Amen. He's got to be number one. To love God with all your heart. Deuteronomy, it says, to love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Everything I've got, got to, I've got to love Him more than to love y'all, more than I love my wife, more than I love my children. you got to love God if you want to be a real Christian. If you can ever learn to do that, you'll be real. You'll be real. You'll be committed. It takes commitment. It takes sacrifice to be a real Christian. To live by the will of God rather than your own will. See, my will this morning was sit on the porch and drink my coffee and let y'all come down here to church. That'd be okay. I wouldn't go to hell for missing church. But that wasn't God's will. I, I have to do what God says to do. I'm committed to my Savior to do what God called me to do. And, and it, it's hard. It's not easy to do. Charlie's talking about people where oh, it's going to be good. You just get saved. Everything's ain't going to be hunky door now. If you're really trying to be a real Christian, you're going to have more trouble than you had before you got saved. You're going to be better off, but the devil's going to whoop you. He don't want y'all. He didn't want y'all in. Some of y'all sitting here today, if you're honest, y'all struggled to come. I'm sure you did. I used to do it all the time. All these things. I just don't feel like it. I'm going to be late. I had an ache. I got to do this. All them things and thoughts that come in there, the devil puts you in your head to keep you from coming here. Because he knows you're going to hear what God had to say today. And it'll help you if you take it to heart. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. It says, and that's in Deuteronomy several times in the Bible. Put God above everything. That's what a real Christian does. A real Christian puts Christ above everything. Uh, to live by the will of God, not your own will. To do the things that God wants you to do, whether it's convenient or not. You know, a lot of times it's easy for us as Christians. Well, we go to church on Sunday. We know we're going to go to church and we'll have dinner and we'll come and on Thursdays. And that's just our routine as a Christian. That's our worship. We come here to worship and praise our Lord. But when the phone rings and you got a sister in the hospital or a sister somewhere, and you're planning on going to the mall today shopping. These ladies, we got a shopping trip. We're going, but we got a sister got sick, just got a call from the hospital. Do you say, well, I'll pray for you and go on, or do you go to the hospital? It takes sacrifice. You have to sacrifice what you want to do to serve Jesus Christ, being a real... Think about Paul. That lesson went... All the things he's talking about, his hands, his resume, look what Paul went through just to be a Christian, just to follow Jesus Christ. And we think we got it bad. I think about the... Uh, a lot of the stories from a lot of missionaries I've met and knew, and I've never been to a foreign country, never done that. If God called me, I'd go, I guess, but they would go and have a church like this, and, and it may be out in the hot sun out there. They didn't have a building. And you hear them talk about people would walk for miles, four or five miles from here to Popeville, just to get to hear a preacher preach the Word of God. And now... If your car don't have air conditioning, it's too hot to drive over here today to church. I'll just stay home and go and get my car fixed. We take it all for granted, folks, what being a Christian is. We, we, we're to be committed to do what God wants us to do rather than what we want to do. As a real Christian, we ought to want to do what God wants us to do. That ought to be, become our lifestyle as we grow. Do the things that's not convenient to be a real Christian. Another thing you have to do to be a real Christian, you have to learn to trust God. You have to trust God. You have to, well, Beth can quote that verse for me if I'd ask her a problem. Trust God with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. We don't have a clue what, I don't have a clue what God's plan is for Thursday night in this church. I don't know what I'll preach. I don't know what we'll sing. I don't know who'll be here. I don't know what'll happen. God already knows. I just trust Him and I'll be here Thursday night, God willing, and we'll have church. And our life's like that. I don't know what this day is. I don't know, by the end of this day, I don't know what's going to happen in my life. I just trust God and keep going. Uh, it takes commitment. It takes trust. It takes love. To love God more than you love anything else. Commit yourself. Trust Him. Proverbs 16.3, the Bible says, Commit thy works unto the Lord. Be committed. 
the works you do, do them for the Lord. I don't get up here and play that guitar for Jimmy McGee. I don't get up here to play it for y'all and make y'all happy because y'all hear all this music. I do it for the Lord. Uh, uh, people sing. They sing to the Lord. We sing praises to the Lord. A lot of people don't do that. That was in that lesson this morning. They're all self righteous They want to get up here and look good. I'm very careful about people and the group we had Thursday night. If y'all were here, I know y'all loved that. And you know them boys, y'all. Y'all know now they're committed to Jesus Christ. They're real Christians. They're not bluegrass boys. And uh, it's a blessing to have a group like that come in here and sing because a lot of musicians and Vern Barry's been one for years. They know a lot of them do it for their own good. They want to be show outs and everything else and we see that and I try my best not to get that kind of people in here to uh, sing with us but we're committed do your works do them unto the Lord in Proverbs it says uh, verse six, chapter 16 verse 3 commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established if you're doing what you're doing for the Lord he'll give you peace in your mind about what you're doing it for the right reason that's what a real Christian does. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, Where therefore you eat, you drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's what, to be committed as a Christian, to be committed, I know it's hard to go to church. I've done it. I, I miss church a lot of times. I, I was guilty of a lot of things to, of being out of church when I could have went. It's hard. It, it, just like y'all coming here this morning. Some of y'all, Don and Cheryl, live, they live in Cheryl. They live in Kings Mountain. Some of us is a mile away. Some of them, they live over in Bellwood to get up and to get here. But you're being committed. The Bible says, forsake not to assembling of yourselves together for exhortation or encouraging each other. If you've been here this morning, if you're here for Bible study, you've done been encouraged. Amen. If you hear from preaching, the Word of God should it not what I do, but God right here, the Holy Spirit ought to be encouraging you this morning to help you go through this day to the next time you can meet with us again. and be with your, It's a family gathering. It's basically what I look at church. I, it's like when you're going out to work all week and you work out of town and you come home on the weekend, there's your family. It's refreshing. It's encouraging to see everybody and have dinner and and then you go back out. That's what church is to me. This is when the family of God gets together and we worship Him and thank Him and we share what He's done in our life and, and how He's helping each one of us and meeting our needs and blessing us. That's a, it's a family get a family gathering to me. It's not a social event. And He says, forsake not to assembling of yourself together. And it takes sacrifice and it takes commitment to do it. But a real Christian will do it. Look at Paul and them. They went for miles and miles from town to town preaching the gospel, meeting in the houses, meeting out by the river, wherever they could to share the gospel with others. Brother Terry was talking about that. I, I've been in a couple meetings this week and both of them turned into a... And I never give up on God. I'm still praying for revival. I'd love to see America turn. I'd love to see God to take this country back and it'd be a great nation like it once was with our forefathers. Uh, uh, it would be recognized as a, a real Christian nation again. I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. I thank God. Uh, you know, God's blessed America. We just had our independence. Before. God's blessed this country for years and years and years. People, I, I've lived in the greatest nation that's ever been. I've lived in the time period, the greatest time period. I, I remember somebody this week was talking, I heard the best country music's ever been. I've heard the best bluegrass music's ever been. I've heard the best rock and roll's ever been. I've drove the best kind of cars it's ever been. We've lived in the best houses probably it'll ever be. We've had the best of everything in this country. Yeah. <clears throat> And you know what's happened? This nation realized they got all that. They don't need God no more. Yes. All the blessings He gives us took the eyes of America off of our Lord. Yes. God to be thankful. And God, I, I was, we was at the, uh, up there the other day saying it was thunder. And I told Beth, I said, God's stomping His foot. He's tired of it. 
God, the Lord's coming back. Amen. And I've been in two different meetings this week, and the preacher at the church has preached, and they, they're doing what I was doing. Uh, and I still pray for revival. I'm not going to give up. But I think God's through with reviving America. I think if this nation don't turn, the Bible says over there in Chronicles, they're, they're talking about real Christians. I think it's 714, 2 Chronicles 714, where it says, if my people, my people, that's his, that's the Christians, that's his people, that's his children, if they'll turn from their evil, wicked ways and humble themselves and pray and ask for forgiveness and repent, I'll heal their nation. This country's not willing to do that. All these people that say they're Christians, they're not real. If they would, they'd heed to the Word of God and they'd turn from their evil. They, you got churches right now. I've been through this over in Shelby Town. Uh, they fought, I was part of it, fighting alcohol in Shelby when it came. You couldn't even get the church to help you fight it. Because so many of them people in the church were for it. But they didn't want nobody to know it, but they went and voted in. You got so many people sitting in churches today that they profess to be a Christian, but they've never got Jesus Christ in their heart. If they had, they wouldn't live the way they live. And if the churches were full of that kind of people and we was crying out to God, I believe He'd heal our land. But I think we're past that time. I think we're, the Lord's coming back. I, I, it bothers me to be in churches and preachers is praying against this stuff. And I know from reading the Word of God, it's in the Bible, it's going to happen. We're praying against God's will. The new world order and all this that the Bible plainly tells us is going to happen. They're saying pray, this is going to happen. You need to pray to pray that it won't happen. That's like praying God won't save somebody. That's God's will is going to happen. It, my thing is, God's put it on my heart to tell people, you better be ready. You better be ready. Because He's coming back. It, it might be 2,000 more years. I don't know. But be ready when the pandemic comes. Everybody's worried about it. And I was. We all got wrapped up in that word about it. And I, the Lord dealt with I said, just be ready. If you get it and you die with it, be ready to meet the Lord. We're not promised another day. I'm not trying to scare them. I'm just talking about the truth right here. I told somebody one day, they called me on the phone. I'm driving my van at work and I'm going down the highway. I'm going 55 miles an hour this way. And there's cars four foot on that side going 55 miles an hour that way. I said, I'm trusting God. I'm ready. If that car comes across the center line and I'm going to in a car wreck, I'm ready to meet Jesus. Amen. If I get COVID and die with COVID, I'm ready to meet Jesus. I said, the main thing is don't worry about all what's going on. Just be ready. Like, you know, we could go through the COVID. We could wear the mask. We could quarantine. We've done all that. And you can be sitting at your house and nobody there is using your plastic bubble to have a heart attack and die. God's got a day He's going to take you home. Every one of us. You be ready for that. Being a Christian is telling others to be ready. Whatever you do, eat, drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Be committed. And be committed to reach others. Be committed. This is one of the great commands in the Bible. Jesus told His disciples in Matthew 28, 18, those last verses in Matthew. He's talking to the disciples here, and that's what a Christian is, a follower of Jesus, a student. It says, Jesus came and spake to them, saying, Matthew 28, 18, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye. He's not saying I'm going to go. He's telling us, go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, everybody, red, yellow, black, and white, don't matter, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. All these people out here in the world don't know what He's commanded us to do. As a real Christian, we ought to know what does saith the Lord. We ought to know the Word of God, and we ought to be the ones out there teaching them, telling them, getting them in here, Teaching them about Jesus. Don't ensure they in Bible study. This is new people. They're coming to Bible study. You need to learn. It's not about going to church. It's about growing in the faith, growing in the Word, so you'll know the truth and be ready for whatever comes. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. 
And I love this part of this verse and love. It's kind of like, y'all know Brother Gene Black, he went with me to Morgan last night, him and Brother Bobby. Jesus says, and listen, and look, when he's telling you something, y'all know how, and look here. <coughs> and look here, you know Bill over at Boyle. It's like the Lord's here says, I've commanded, I'll do the things whatsoever I've commanded. And hey, hey, he says, love, he says, hey, look here. <coughs> I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. A real Christian is never alone again. A real Christian has been convicted, he's been converted and changed, and a real Christian will be committed to doing the things of the Lord, doing what thus saith the Lord. Brother Charlie is a great example. <coughs> he's committed to preaching or teaching the Word in here, Bible teaching. I remember the day I asked him about doing that. First he said, let me think about that. He said, no, I'll do it. <coughs> I don't know if you remember that. I said, I told God if he ever opened the door asked me to do something, I'd never say no. And what a great Bible teacher Charlie is for us. Amen. Uh, Amen. It's being committed. First, you've got to be convicted to be born again, to be in that family. A, a real Christian has been convicted of your sin. That sin debt's paid by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. You've accepted that as your debt, as your payment. And you've believed it in your heart that Jesus died for you and God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says, if you will confess that, believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. Then you're born into the family and you're a Christian. That conversion and change comes because when you become that Christian, you're not the same person you was before you asked the Lord into your life. He changed you. I'm not the old drug addict and crazy person I was living for the devil from the moment he saved me, I was a new person. If you've been born again, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You become, you don't want to do the things you used to, you learn new things to do. You still have fun. You live your life. You have a great time. And then you come to that part of being committed. Well, I guess I'll go to church now. And it's a struggle. It's a real struggle to do it. But if you want to be a real Christian, you commit yourself to serving, being in service for the Lord, and going and studying, and then sharing what God teaches you with the lost and dying world out here. A lot of them, your own family and friends, that's going to die and go straight to hell because we're comfortable in our little bubble in the church house and we don't go share it with the world. He says, go into all the world. And the other verse I said, take it to the uttermost parts of the earth. I said, I'm in Kaiser, that's where I'm at. <laughs> and I need to show the gospel more in Kaiser than I do. And we do too. We need to tell our neighbors. We need to tell our co-workers. You want to be a real Christian, just follow Jesus. That's all it is. Be born again and follow Jesus. Let him. I used to have horses. I used to ride horses. And you got to have the reins on them horses. If you don't hold on to them, that horse won't go where he wants to. Just let Jesus put a bit in your mouth, put them reins around your neck, and let him guide you. Some of y'all in here have got horses to bed, and some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Charlie mentioned that earlier. I, I've got up here, Max McKee used to get upset. He said, you don't even get up front. Church tell me you don't know what you're doing. That don't look good, preacher. But I do know what I'm doing. I'm just following Jesus Christ. And it don't matter if you're a preacher or not, just let Christ have you and just let him hold you in his hand and go where he wants you to go Amen. and do what he wants you to do. That's what a real Christian is. That's what a real Christian is. Committed, convicted, converted, and committed to being like Christ. I want to be Christ-like. Y'all have heard me. I'm not boasting on me. I just glory to God. I, when I get there, I've heard people say, I just want to get in. I don't care if I've got a mantle. I just want to get in heaven because I've heard. I, I don't want all that. I'm going to get it because the Bible says I've got a mansion somewhere in heaven for me. I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. I do the best I can do. I'm unlearned. I'm, I'm so glad when I read about Peter and them boys in the Bible. Paul was unlearned. Talking about the speech, I don't talk plain. All them people, it don't matter who you are or what you are. God will use you if you let him. If you'll be committed to serving Him, there's a place, maybe in your home, maybe in your work, maybe in this church, in your community, 
Maybe want you to be a missionary. May call you to preach. God will use you. He can use anybody. But you got to be converted, changed, and committed to serving Him.